Apple is trying to do anything they can to get us to buy this iPad and to spend more money and honestly, I have to say that I feel bad for the engineers. I use this thing every day for a week. So is it really worth it? Well, I have to say that this is the best hardware of a computer ever, at least for me. Now, of course, one major thing that made headlines is just how thin it is. It is and was it worth making it this thin? I say yes. Now you guys have seen people bending these and anybody can bend something that is thin, but having such a thin and lightweight design has made it possible to comfortably use this 13 inch model in your hand for a long time, even for gaming sessions. It is now very comfortable, still not as good as something small, but it is doable. And I still appreciate the design and how it feels because of that using it with the new magic keyboard. It is now the same weight as a MacBook Air where before it was actually thicker and heavier. So it's just such a nice package to take with you to have with you on the go and having that ability to remove it from the keyboard and use it as a tablet is amazing. Now, one thing that reviewers got wrong is the whole 60 watt charging. We even fell into this, but in our tests, we never saw a go go anywhere near that high. What we saw was up to 40 watts and that is actually the max eco. Now, yes, Apple was right when they said that this pass through the magnetic connection can offer up to 60 watts, but the iPad doesn't make use of it. So it's still going to take about two and one half hours to charge. If you have a powerful brick, but with the included 20 watt, you're looking at about three and a half hours. And thankfully, even though it is so thin and we have this older display and the battery life is still great. The only time I noticed it going down was when I was gaming and then I'm maxing out the settings and I could tell it's going down. But other than that, using it for web browsing, watching movies, typing on it is really nice. Now I have to talk about the performance because this thing has the craziest chip in it out of any computer they threw in the M4 chip. And this just kind of shocked the world. We kind of expected it to possibly come out, but it's incredible and single core beats out anything else out anything else out there while be. In a 5.1 millimeter device that is not smart core is also insane. But the weird thing is inside it actually has 12 gigs of RAM on the base that doesn't make sense because you only have access to less than 8 gigs. And the same thing with the 16 gig model. If you decide to buy a 1TB for a ridiculous price, you have more RAM than we, you have access to. We'll see if that changes anything. I'll talk about software in just a bit, but. Apple also packed in a 9 core or a 10 core CPU, which is a first. Now we did a full comparison and yes, the 10 core is faster, but you do not need. It is not worth spending the extra money. And the same thing for getting the extra range. The difference is so negligible that you're basically wasting money unless you need that extra storage. And in my time using it, never once did it feel slow with the 9 core model. It is incredibly fast. Now, the thing that stands out the most other than having that thin design is the display. Yes, it is the world's best display. And this was the only device where I felt, wow, this screen is too bright. I need to turn this down. Usually it is the opposite. It is crazy. The tandem OLED is amazing. It is better than the mini LED, a lot better than the LCD. But that brings me to a question. Is it really worth upgrading from an older one just for this? And I have to be honest and say that for most people, no iPad screens still look great. So unless there's a very particular reason, like if you love using these outside in the bright sun, it is the best, but it's a whole heck of a lot of money and watching videos is amazing on it. And the sound is still so good beating out the MacBook Air, which is, you know, a large full size device. It is the ultimate Netflix and YouTube powerhouse. It's the ultimate portable system. And with this new keyboard, it is such a nice typing experience. It, the trackpad is so good. I mean, this is a really nice step up. Of course, all of that is luxury because the old one still works. We did a full comparison, but having the function row at the top, all that access, it is so nice along with the rest of the hardware. And of course the Apple pencil once again, that's a whole another step up the skis function with your haptic feedback being built in the barrel roll is so nice. Now, of course, like most YouTubers, we are not artists, so not a lot of people can make use of this, but Apple is just so sneaky with this whole system. If you finally wanted to update, you have to get this new one and you want an extra performance. If you care about that, you've got to step up. You need the new keyboard. You need the new Apple pencil that is just so much money. And even just the iPad alone cost more than a MacBook, not including adding into t -boarding, a keyboard, adding in the Apple pencil. This is just one expensive device. And because of that, after a week, is it really worth it? I would say no. The People that have been sticking with their 2018 iPads or their M1 iPads for most of you guys. It's not worth spending the money. You can get such a great deal on those devices right now. And you could deal with a little bit extra thickness. You could deal with some blooming on the mini LED 
and the rare situations that pops up and that is mainly because Apple has done nothing new in terms of. After so many times in last week I have needed to pull out my MacBook and to use that instead now. When I wasn't limited by the software it was nice to use it but it is still an accessory device for most people and even though I love the 13 inch. I think that the 11 inch is going to be the better device you save 300 bucks or 350 if you want to get the keyboard and even though this one is thing if you use this for notes you're using it handheld it's still nicer. So I like this as an iPad but once again just spending $9.99 9 and that is a whole lot of money. Now if Apple actually did what their patent showed and you have the tablet and it attaches to the keyboard and you get a full desktop OS that would be a game changer that would be what would be worth spending the money on this kind of a device but at this point I feel bad for the hardware developers and all the engineers creating an ultimate hardware solution tablet keyboard everything basically the best hardware but it's still an iPad a really expensive iPad. Now just like in previous years we're all waiting on WWWDC getting your hopes up that Apple is going to push this to what it's capable of it's capable of running full Mac OS but after all these years I'm sitting here disappointed and my faith is going down and down because I don't think they're going to do it so you guys let me know your thoughts are these the best iPads ever yes is the hardware and the keyboard accessories excellent the display yes but is it worth the money it is not and if I was just a regular person I would go and buy a discounted older iPad instead because still very similar most of the things you could do is identical with both of them and you don't have to spend a crazy amount of money on an iPad this device is not going to offer you any major change or any cool function that the older version doesn't have. In my opinion this is not a big upgrade to spend a lot of money. Hardware wise this is a strong device but what if we can do all things on an older device. And the software updates are still supporting the last ones what do you guys think about this is it worth upgrade or not. Thank you guys for watching check out all of our great comparisons if you really want to get into the details click that circle buff to subscribe this is me Ali and I'll see you in the next one.